Take a good look at that screen. Oh boy, we have a lot to talk about. Hey there, everybody. How are you doing? Good? Don't worry, it won't be for much longer. <laughs> All right, so I have made a literal, an actual fall-themed Mario Party board out of various items I've gotten from the 2.0 update to just anything I can scrounge up. This is by far probably, it's not the biggest board I have made. This is probably the second biggest board I've made in this game. The first board being Tropical Chaos, which was a while ago, and I mean a really long time ago. Then was... We're just gonna, you know. <laughs> the next board was Blooming Isles, and then finally I did a hidden board for everyone who visited me during like Halloween and whatnot. And that was just like a, I didn't know what to name it. I really didn't know because I didn't even know what the board really was. It was a combination of like Dragon Road from Sonic Unleashed and then just a Halloween themed board. But I don't really have much to work with. So yeah, but fall, oh my God. <laughs> There's just too much to work with. I mean, look at all this. This is the beginning. This looks probably a lot better than how Tropical Chaos had it. This is by far probably the most effort I've ever put into a Mario Party board. And oh boy, I'm delivering. Let's, let's just talk about it, okay? Oh yeah, I like the first turn Bowser Space way too much for like the last three boards I've done it. I did it for Tropical Chaos, I did it for freaking Blooming Isles, and I'm gonna do it again! These item spaces, when they were present in both Tropical Chaos and Blooming Isles, gone. They don't exist anymore. You can just say, me and this space, in particular, me, me and this space, have had a divorce. We're no longer together. Uh, I might as well get into the lucky space right away because it's absolutely hilarious how I have two lucky space areas and literally two different areas that you could go to and it's random choice. It's literally a 50-50 shot of which theme you get. Might as well show the first one off because why not? Oh, okay, we're, we're getting the less interesting one. The first one is just a passage into the waterfalls, and I wanted to just do something with this. I felt like it had nothing better to do, so why not? It's just a short pathway of coins, and free start the end as for freaking usual. I'm not done yet developing this area, oddly enough, as much as the frame rate would have you think that. <laughs> yeah, we got the other one. First try. This area I put a lot of effort into for being a lucky space area. If I had more gold rose flowers and I didn't use them all up in like the beginning of my island, well, they would all be here. Unfortunately, I only have one. To make up for this, I decided to just put whatever plants I could. But yeah, it's the lucky space area. I don't know what else to tell you. It's nice and peaceful, nothing really just messing with you or getting in your way. And another, another free star space, but it's about time I start talking about the stars on this board. It's not a traditional Mario Party per se, but it's as close as we're gonna get. Stars on this island, they're gonna be accumulated by making food. Throughout the various spots in the board you will be gaining access to shops which i have not placed down yet don't mind that decision so this board is not final but it, i really wanted to bring attention to this like i am so close to done with it it's not even funny i have patch notes ready to go so i might as well just get this out of the way stars on this board 
are going to be accumulated a little bit differently than how you're used to. Because of all the new food and crops that have been gained through the 2.0 update, like carrots and whatnot, just take a good look here. Look at how we have carrots, potatoes, pumpkins, everything. The whole lineup. We're going to be taking advantage of food. We're going to be actively making food in this version. And because other players can craft while you're visiting an, visiting an island, it means the very center of the board is essentially a kitchen of sorts. It was supposed to be a stove top. I just decided to put all this here as placeholder. So this design is very tentative. We're going to be changing this very soon. But essentially, you're trying to make as many bits of food as you can. Depending on how much ingredients you have used to make your food, I will award you one star per ingredient used. Stars are going to be numerous on this board because of this. And please mind the splices. I don't know what's been going on with my capture card lately. So, yeah, it's it, it's been a little bit weird for me. Either way, whoever makes essentially the best food and just fills up the most belly wins. By that, I mean how many ingredients have you used? How much effort did you go through to make said food? It comes down to the crafting recipes you've gained about cooking it's ultimately on you to make good food so come prepared if you don't have good diys you should probably talk with friends and figure that out or better yet it might be a good reason to have alliances on this board and take advantage of that because trading food is primo it's like a monopoly of sorts you want to have all the food. And just like how Tropical Chaos was, bribing's a thing. Now I'm making bribing a mechanic. Because here's the thing. When making food and culinary, it's a trading system. You gotta barter. And oh boy, I'm a corrupt DM. So we're going to be taking advantage of said bartering. That's as much as I'm going to leak for stars and how you how you essentially win and that is your use for coins coins are going to be used to purchase ingredients the more ingredients that you got the more odds you have of making a really good meal so now we can talk about the overall board and this one's wild aside from some design things needing to be patched up like some question mark blocks needing to be placed down Lucky space, I've already shown off. Thank God, because I don't want to repeat myself. DK and Bowser are going to be working a lot more differently on this board than previous boards. In previous boards, I make you play a minigame and you have to fight against me in order to, per se, uh, I will give you a reward for free or I will take away something from you. Like standard Mario Party. Well, uh... I'm just going to do an RNG generator. Mini games take forever with this kind of setup. I mean, just look at this place. Traversing is a nightmare. So minimalizing the amount of mini games is basically my go-to for right now. Essentially, what the plan's going to be for mini games, though, is I'm going to use all this open space on the water. I don't know what mini games we're going to be having because I'm going to try doing something different than what I used to do. I want to make new mini games that haven't been tried before in Animal Crossing history. But if I have to do a retread, I will. Believe me, I will not hesitate. We literally have a retread up this waterfall. And I used it way too many times to be honest. So that's a game design failure on my end. I'm going to try to avoid that in all accounts. But, yeah, we're not going to be doing mini games anymore for DK and Bowser since, well, yeah, they do make for some interesting events. 
It's just traversing on this board is too tedious. I'm not going to put anyone through that. No, we're not doing that. So what happens, happens. And that's purely just how it's going to be. Uh, so the map, so the map, right? I gotta show this off. It's a little bit of a weird board. But, if you've seen how my paths are right now, it's kind of in a loop-de-loop. -loop. Or, rather, the left side is like a spiral. It's a one-way track. And the right side, it becomes per se, a retread back to the start. Here's the thing. I wanted to make a map based on the infinity sign because there's limitless possibilities when it comes to the season of fall. I'm just, I might not even be kidding. This might be my favorite season ever. So I really don't know what the deal is with fall because I really love fall. But yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I might as well just show you the right since the star is always going to be on the left. On the right, though, you just have lots of other stuff and more ways to earn money. So it's a little bit of a longer tread, but you do get money, which I think is primo. And I don't know why I haven't put a lucky space on this area yet. I should really do that. Uh, happening spaces, right. A lot of happening spaces are just, oh, uh, crops for free or crops at a discount. I don't know what I'm going to be doing for happening spaces yet. If you have any suggestions for happening spaces, leave them in the comments. I would love to hear your guys' feedback. So this area is a little bit of, per se, another retread, go figure, and it loops around. However, the issue here is that Thwomp will cost you 10,000 bells, aka 10 coins, per retread. It's a nice chance at getting some extra items or possibly getting some versus spaces if you want to steal from your friends. So that's okay, but you also have a versus space right here. I don't know what people really want, so... This is just how it's going to be for right now. I might change this area later and add a lucky space area in because I want to make it more eye-opening and interesting. But that's the best I could do for right now. Everything else is just kind of go back around to where you started. Simple as that. And as for the left, this area is a little bit more fleshed out, thank god. I don't know what I'm going to be doing for these happening spaces. Again, I cannot overstate that enough. So, please, please, please don't comment saying that I didn't explain what the happening spaces on the board do when I am literally saying I don't know what I want them to do. Uh, up here. Thank God I actually have a reason to use vines because I've always wanted to use cliffs in my boards. So top path, it's basically like a little vegetation area and bamboo. Very, very nice for crops. I'm gonna do a lot of crop related things up here rather than the below. If you just want a short path, then take the below. It's your best bet <laughs> because it's only three spaces opposed to everything else. But everything else has a lot more crops. So I'm thinking I might as well like try to add like a farmer's market up there. And that will sell you everything you need to make food. I don't know. That's kind of a goal. And then if you have too much food. If you have like too much food to make. Or you have like too many ingredients to make. And you don't need to go back up. And you just want to get to the star. Taking the bottom path with no consequence. I think that's a pretty banger idea. I've been debating if I should put a thwomp behind it, but... I I'm already using one. I don't really need to go overboard. Oh, this, these three happening spaces, I know. So, these trees are infamous. For... The <laughs> these trees are infamous for having a lot 
of wasp nests every single time I shake one. So it's luck based and you have to shake a single tree three times and if you do not get attacked by wasps, I will I will give you like probably 20,000 bells. We'll, we'll just, I don't know what I'm going to do for like a balancing because I want to balance this out. Really, I do because it's three spaces. But if you shake one of these trees and you get a pile of wasps, well, uh, lose 10,000 bells and I'll just give you some medicine so you don't look so hindered. Unless it's your outright choice to just look like you've been through like a Vietnam War of sorts. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. By the way, every coin that is just outright on the overworld, I'm making it 1,000 bells. It's just one coin. That's all. Uh, everything else from here just kind of spirals around. The second lucky space is right here, and it goes straight to the pipe. No worries at all. Here. Oh, boy. This is another three that I love. You thought Pagonia Peak was mean. No. I wanted to do that again. Times three. So here's the thing. Now I remember what I wanted to do with this happening space. With this happening space, you get behind the big guns and you just get to fire off cannonballs at whatever person you want and they lose 5,000 bells right then and there. It doesn't matter where on the map they are. However, you only get two shots. So you could shoot two people, making them each lose 5,000 bells. Or you could shoot one person two times and make them lose 10,000 bells. Pretty neat. If you are right here in this three lane, well, um, I don't know what else to tell you other than sayonara, goodbye, you're taking a cannonball to the face. Not only are you losing 10,000 bells ever, for like the time you get shot by me, but you also get sent back to start. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not kidding. Landing on one of these three spaces makes you lose 10,000 bells and you go back to start. I don't need to repeat myself because I just did. Down here though is where the star is. And likewise, I've already explained how to earn stars. That's pretty much about it. The one big factor I have left out is items. Here's the thing. Your food could be used as items. I'm not messing around with the ornaments since that got insanely hard to track the last time I ran a group through. And oh my god, I am not doing that again. Even if I have written down notes, nobody is going to remember. So, having a rubric for all the food is probably my best bet. It's a good use for ingredients that are either too plentiful or just too useful. So I think that's a happy medium to make use of everything else except for my brain. Okay. Yeah, definitely not my brain. <laughs> oh yeah, I want to incorporate the takeout coffee one way or another. I just don't know how I'm going to do it. But, yeah, like, ingredients. If it's too plentiful, I'm probably going to give it, like, a worse effect. Like, per se, we can make sugar cane be double dice. If that makes any sense. I don't know what I'm going to do with all the food, though. But, yeah, I don't know what this... I don't know what the name of this board is going to be. So... We're just going to call it Animal Crossing But Mario Party Fall Edition. Because I really don't know how else to explain this. I, like, don't know how else to, like, show off the mood of fall. But, yeah. That's it. That is the entire board and how we're going to be handling it. I don't know what we're going to do about items. I guess I might as well make a version 2 video. I wanted to get this video out as soon as humanly possible. Without overcomplicating things. Let's just say you run a group by me and 
the designs look different than how they initially appear right now. Again, I am telling you, this is tentative. I don't know if I'm going to be keeping these designs. I guess I'll see you guys later.